Hey guys, it's Abram from Expat Your Life. Uh, today, we are talking with a good friend of mine. His name is Neil. Neil, say hi. Hi guys. How are you doing, Abram? I'm doing really good. How are you? It's hot. It, it, it is. is hot, <laughs> but I'm good. Good. I'm good. Excellent. All right. Uh, so, Neil is new to Vietnam. I know this because I was a recruiter at one point and I was responsible for bringing him into the country for a uh, time period. So I wanted to talk to him today, especially because he has brand new experiences. He's recently moved. And so I want this to feed into the motivations and you learn from his story. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. All right, Neil, what, so, what, what did you think? Like what made you want to move overseas? Okay, what, what made me want to move overseas? And, and I think this, this is probably with a lot of people out there, but it was COVID, mainly COVID um, at this point in time. I've always wanted to come overseas. It's always been an idea that I played with in my head, but I'd never take the step. Uh, so there came a point because of COVID. Mm -hmm. There was no projects for me to do. There, nobody wanted a business analyst. Nobody wanted to pay a business analyst trying to cut costs during COVID. So I was like, what can I do? Like I, I was unemployed for like nine months. Mm -hmm. So finally that, that idea or that dream of, of traveling came to fruition when I got a call from my good buddy Abraham over here who, who helped me to, to recruit and come out here. So the main thing I would say is, is to get back into having a purpose in life, doing something with your life and um, just being productive again. And then it was international experience, a different place. So I took the opportunity. Okay. So so that's that's the main reason as to why I eventually did come overseas. Okay. So now let's go back a little bit from just COVID kind of causing you to make that jump. Yes. You were thinking about moving internationally before. Yeah, why? Like, can you go dive, dive deeper into that? Yes. Um, well, I'm from South Africa, as as and the conditions in South Africa, in terms of the economy and stuff, it's it's stable but not too stable. Okay. And and I always saw different stories like this. I always watched different interviews like this and saw that there's multiple opportunities overseas. Not not specifically here in Vietnam, but just broaden your perspective a bit. And another thing is I'd never been out of South Africa up until now. So to go back a bit, that's that's one of the things. Number one was to see different places, to I mean the world's a big place. To learn about different cultures as well. I like to talk. I like to talk to people. I like to learn about people and their culture. I'm very open minded. Mm -hmm. So at one point also, even after I graduated and started working in South Africa, I was getting a bit bored. Things were getting a bit mundane. It was, and it was sort of like autopilot mode, you know. Mm -hmm. So then, I mean, coming overseas would be a different challenge, uh, a different experience, a different challenge. So that's that's why I played with the idea in my head. And then, as you just said, COVID gave me that final push. Okay. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Now, how long have you left your home? How long have you been away from your home country? Um, about three months now. Okay, excellent. Yeah, so, almost the 18th of March will be exactly three months. Oh, yeah. that was actually, the 18th of March was the day that I left my home country. Interesting. Three years ago. Um, oh. So that's, that's, that's a very good day. That's a very good day. <laughs> I mean, I mean uh, you seem to be doing well, so maybe it's a, maybe it's a good luck day. Uh, maybe. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's hope so. Right. <laughs> All right. Perfect. So, so you made that move. You had the motivation and you wanted to see other parts of the world and see other cultures and meet new people. Right. All right. And you, you, didn't, you, you did it. You finally made that step. You, you know, COVID's gotten you to that point. Now, you've been here for three months. Looking back... Would you have changed anything on your way of making that trip? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't change a thing. But that's that's also just my personality. I I, I don't have regrets. Uh, so when people always ask me a question, would you go back and change anything in your life? You, but you can't. So you've got to take what what happened or the decisions that you've made, and you have to live with it, and you have to learn from it. So in terms of making that trip. I mean, I had a quarantine <laughs> in December, I had a quarantine through Christmas and New Year, but I wouldn't change a thing. 
because it's it's brought me to this point. It also makes me who I am in a sense, mm -hmm. experiencing certain things. And if things were different, it could have caused a butterfly effect for something else to happen. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I believe is things happen the way it should, whether it was good or bad. Um, so no, I wouldn't change anything. Okay. It, it, it was it was really rushed. I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah. It was. It just happened like that. Okay. Um, two weeks and I was like flying already. But no, I wouldn't change a thing. I wouldn't change anything. And so, so, so far, you, you, it's a short time that you've been here. Is there, looking back, if you could go back three months and right. give yourself a piece of advice about making the move, what would be the one piece of advice that you'd give yourself? The one piece of advice that I would give, give myself in making the move, hmm. I would say to learn a little bit more of, of, of the language, not, not become fluent in Vietnamese in two weeks, that's impossible, mm -hmm. but to learn a bit more of the basics, because let me tell you a funny story right? <laughs> <laughs> of, of why I'm saying this, okay? Um, and especially since it's my, it's my first time out of South Africa, so even, you know, going on Google Maps and stuff and looking for something, it's, it's different to doing that in an English-speaking country like South Africa. So what happened was we, we quarantined for two weeks. Then we had to fly from Hanoi back to Ho Chi Minh City. And it was with one of the guys that flew over with me, Marcus. And so it was like, our flight was like, I think, half past five in the morning. We were awake, ready on time, get a grab on the way to the airport. And he took us to the wrong terminal. But the distance between, it's not, it's not like it's just a quick walk to the other terminal. He took us to the international terminal. We had to obviously be at the domestic terminal. And now that's a one kilometer walk, it's 5.30 in the morning. It's saying 10 minutes to get a new grab. So the thing is though, why I say learn a bit of the basics about the language and learn where you're going, exactly where you need to be. Because we missed that flight. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, that's the, 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 the kicker of the story. We missed that flight and now we're stressing out we had a contact Nan and, and, and the company and booked the next flight. So, so it was a bit chaotic, but I think that I could have did better uh, preparation mm -hmm. to overcome the language barrier. Because obviously our driver at the same time didn't speak a word of English. And when he dropped us off at the terminal, I'm like, it looks a bit quiet here. So we had to take 15 minutes to go in, find someone who could finally communicate with us to say, hey, you're at the wrong terminal. The other one's like a kilometer down there, <laughs> right? <laughs> then I look at the time and it's like five minutes for boarding to close. And then I, I look at trying to get another grab, it's just 10. Yeah, you understand, yeah. the whole thing. To do. Yeah. So the one piece of advice I would say, especially in the beginning, prepare a bit more. <laughs> um, looking at the destinations that you're going to and where you need to be, because mm -hmm. the language barrier is a challenge. Okay. But I could have overcame it if I prepared a bit more. But like I said before, no regrets. It's a story to tell. Yeah. Yes. All right. And before coming, you know, you saying prepare the language, but before coming to Vietnam, what did you know about Vietnam? What? It's hot. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it's hot. Um, I knew that it's a very beautiful country in terms of the rice fields and the places to go and see. The floating markets apparently is here as well. I'll, I'll be honest with you, I just was looking at, at, at this as an opportunity to, to start my world travel. Mm -hmm. So so some people may watch this video and be like, you didn't know nothing about, I'll be honest, I didn't, I didn't know too much about Vietnam, mm -hmm. right? But um, I, have, I have an aunt as well, an aunt that lives in Hong Kong, and she's been to Vietnam multiple times. And um, she said it's pretty good. So I, I just went off that and I went off the fact that I want to learn about new cultures. So I don't know too much about Vietnam, to be honest. But now I know more than I did three months ago. So that's to answer your question. I came here to get out of that shell. Okay. Yeah. Uh, excellent. Excellent. So you came here to broaden yourself, get more experiences, gain you know new knowledge about a new culture. Right. Um, so now you've been here for three months. You've gotten your feet on the ground. I assume you're you're pretty settled. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now I know where I'm going. Now you know where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> now the question is, what do you see in the next six months as far as journeys and trips and travel? What do you want to do in those next six months? 
Okay, in the next six months, I mean, I mean, I firstly, I'm, I'm here as an English teacher. So, I mean, the number one priority to me is better myself in that sense. Because mm-hmm. it's the first time I'm, I'm, I'm a teacher. And it, anyway, I've never taught before. Like, I think I've told you before, I'm a business analyst. So, this is all new to me. So, the first thing is to learn as much as I can from experienced people and experienced teachers like yourself. And, and sort of get better in that. And in terms of the travel and tourism, um, I, I want to plan a trip to Da Nang mm-hmm. for like a weekend at some point. And um, in the next six months, I want to I wanna go to... There's a famous theme, theme park, isn't there? That's like two hours out of Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, maybe. I'm not sure. I know there is... Which theme park are you talking I about? I don't know what it's called, but I, d- I did see... I did see stuff on the internet about it. So, okay. um, I want to actually visit some of the smaller villages. I just, I just don't know which one yet because in the city it's chaotic mm-hmm. quite a bit. So, within the next six months there will be a time when I will want to take a short vacation and sort of slow things down a bit and go somewhere where it's sort of a bit chilled mm-hmm. for a few days and learn about how things work there and learn a bit more about the culture itself. Like I said, I... And I sucked at history in school, so <laughs> I want to learn more as well in the next six months, watch a few documentaries about Vietnam, now that I'm here. Okay. So, that's the plan going forward. Now, with the documentaries that you plan on watching, do you plan on visiting the locations where the documentaries were filmed or where they took place? Yeah. Okay. Well, at the moment I haven't really watched any documentaries yet, but so I don't know any places, but um, I'm sure there's places within Ho Chi Minh City. So, um, look, my plan is on, on every weekend to at least watch something. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's an episode of something, maybe it's an hour long. Apparently there is a really good documentary on Netflix, I think. Um, and then after that, go to these places to actually see where it actually all happened. Or some of the, you know, some of the stuff that was used during those time periods. That, that, that are, that's, that's still preserved today. A museum, sort of. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So, you know, now you're talking about documentaries. You're right. talking about to, that's going to help you within Vietnam. Now, let's go back a little bit. Were there any books? Was there any media? Was there anything in particular that you can remember, you know, something that stands out right. that helped you spark your travel journey? Specifically for Vietnam? Well, it was just it, like leaving your home country altogether, just like right. giving you that wanderlust, giving you that travel bug, if you will. Well, um, firstly about learning different cultures. There's, uh, there was a couple of videos that I watched um, about the Asian side of the world, where cult- cult- culturally things are very different. And so I wanted to, 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 to be involved in that. To sort of learn about that, to learn about different cultures, because we have a certain way of doing things back home. Mm-hmm. And um, I found it interesting back home. If you sort of deviate from some of those cultural norms, you looked at like, well, what's wrong with you? But I also saw that the culture differences in different places, what happens here, if that happened back home, people will look at you funny, mm-hmm. you know? And some of the things that happen here, it's, it's fine and it's, and it's considered uh, as, as a normal. So, so that so, sort of sparked my interest to be like, South Africa is not the world. The world is many places. So I believe that I wanted to, to deal with a lot of different type of people. People with different cultures, with different values. And um, that's what sparked my interest. Learning about how different things are. Okay. in different parts of the world. And the, yeah. Excellent, excellent. So you're taking this journey to learn more about things like cultures and meet new people right. and have these new experiences. What I would like to do is dive down to the root right. of that, like kind of like a little badger if you, you know, just get down to what was the initial spark? What was right. the initial idea? What was the... Was there a book? Was there a video? Was there, you know, any other sort of media, you know, right, that, right. that made you think, I can leave South Africa and have a life abroad? Like, what gave you that idea? To be honest, it wasn't any sort of media. It was actually a friend of mine. A friend of mine that studied with me 
to the point of they studied with me. They graduated on the same day as me. And then they left to go to... Which one is the side that you can go to South South Korea? Uh, yeah, North yeah. Korea. North Korea. Can't no, go to North. You can go to North. Yeah. yeah. So they went to Korea. They went, they went to South Korea. And I mean, I was in my head at that point. I was a little bit closed off in the sense of, dude, you just studied a three or four year degree. Why are you going to do teaching? Mm -hmm. You qualified as an accountant, or you know? So that is a bit weird to me. And so he was the one, like, I obviously still kept in contact with him, I still do talk to him today. And this was like 10 years ago, right? Yeah, 10 years ago, that, that, that we graduated and we left. So I sort of like, as I was talking to him, and you know the pictures he used to send me, the stories he used to tell me, and when, when he used to come back to South Africa for, for vacation, and then he went from South Korea to Cambodia, to Vietnam, and at finally he settled in England, and now he's, he's doing what he studied. But, it's just that journey and the stories he told me and the media that he sent me was fascinating. I mean, it's, it's, it's another thing about me is, I think I spoke about it earlier in, in one of your earlier questions is, I was getting bored in South Africa of the same thing over and over again. So it was that friend of mine that sparked the sort of, I see traveling also as a challenge to adapt mm -hmm. in the different places that you travel to. And so it's interesting, it's a, tr it's a challenge. It covers all the boxes of getting out of something boring and mundane. Okay. So if I just say what sparked it, is, was my friend and his progression. You know, from me, from me starting off saying, what are you doing, you know? <laughs> and then a couple of years later, he went to so many different places. I was like, okay, well, guess he was right. I was wrong, so maybe I should try this. Maybe, maybe, maybe I need to do this as well. Because I get, I get bored very quickly. So, so traveling sort of covers that. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. Now, now let's let's take a look. So you're talking. Your friend inspired you to make this move. Right. Right. What's something that you would say, or what's something that you would want to show another good friend of yours to make them think about starting their journey, to think about starting uh, and being an expatriate right. as well. Where do you want to see, or how do you want to inspire others to do the same? Okay, well, to be honest, how about how I would inspire, because I've only been to one country up mm -hmm. besides South Africa, which is Vietnam. And I actually have a friend now that, that, that I got onto the TEFL course and, and, and she started doing it. And so the main thing that stood out for me here, like I'll, I'll mostly speak about Vietnam because that's the place that, the one place I've been to in comparison to South Africa is, this place is different in a cultural sense and in a safety sense. I mean, South Africa's got one of the highest, highest crime rates mm -hmm. in the world. I mean, for argument's sake, nobody just takes anything. I mean, even, even with the kids in my class, mm -hmm. right? I mean, we have the dollar system. They will never take it if it's on the table. It's, that's just crazy, because in South Africa, you leave your phone on the table, and you look away for, for two seconds or you go to the bathroom and it's gone. It is gone. You always got to sort of live in this, this, the sense where you sort of got to have to like lock your things up. Got to create your own jail for you in South Africa, mm -hmm. you know? In, in Vietnam, firstly, the safety aspect and the respect from one person to another, like, like me respecting you and your property. That's, that's very different. And it also makes, makes you a bit more relaxed. You know, compared to back home. Mm -hmm. So it, that's one of the things that 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 I would in, in, uh, use to inspire somebody. Also, the living conditions and the let's be honest, we all like money, don't mm -hmm. we? Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. The cost of living here is is so much better. I think I spoke about about it earlier in another question as well. The economic climate in South Africa is getting worse, mm -hmm. right? So I mean, that's two good enough reasons: safety and good money. <laughs> I mean, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and, and then what comes after that for me is the culture. I like learning about new cultures. So I would advise people if you're that type of a person, if you're open minded, then it's a no brainer, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it, if you're that type of person seeking adventure, seeking something new, seeking to learn about something, then that's what I would use as inspiration. So it's the cost of living, the safety, and the culture cultural differences. Excellent, yeah. excellent. So, you know, we've talked about your inspirations and everything, 
Now, right. I'm going to ask you, this is going to be a two-part question. One is going to be, what's the best experience that you've had in the last three months? And the next is going to be, what's the worst experience that you've had in the last three months? Okay. Um, the best experience I've had is some of the food here, man. Some of the food is amazing. And, and uh, okay, I know you said in the last, it's, a, it's like an experience that goes over a period of time, but I've lost a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. That's the best thing. <laughs> uh, it's because of the food here as well. I'm, I'm pretty sure it is because of the food. I've been eating a lot of uh, Vietnamese food, and the, the, the best thing about it is it tastes so good. It tastes good, and it's healthy for you, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so that would sum it up. The best experience has been the food. And I can give you another, a second experience is just personally where I work, it's sort of like we are a family, mm -hmm. you know, the way we treat each other, the way, I see the, I see the way they treat each other as well. Um, I just feel welcome there. It's almost like the culture is, is a very welcoming culture. And I've, I also experience that where I live, in the apartments, and like the, the place I frequently eat at. So. In terms of that, the best experience has been the weight loss and the different people, okay. and, and people welcoming me as a, um, an expat, as a, and as a foreign. Um, I'd say the worst experience was when I missed that flight. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. because at that point I was stressing out. So was Marcus, my friend that was that was with me, because mm -hmm. we were like, what is what is the company going to say? <laughs> what are they? You know, <laughs> that was. And it was just a combination of, of feeling like, damn it, I should have did better research. I should have made sure. It was just at that moment, trying to communicate with the driver mm -hmm. and knowing that the, the clock is ticking for, it was just overall pretty stressful at that, that point. It was very easily resolvable after that, but at that moment, it was like, yeah. So, just nothing has been worse than that. <laughs> but that's because the people here have also made me realize that everything is solved. Okay. Yeah. Uh, excellent. So now you've had these experiences in the last three months. You've seen the pros and cons versus living in your home country. Right. And we've kind of addressed those already. Uh, what I want to do now is see where you want your journey to take you. Right. Like we talked about your friend and he said that he moved to many different countries and right. ended up in England. What do you see in your near future? Let's take it out to like the next five years or so. Okay. Well. Teaching is pretty new for me, so it's 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 different. Uh, I'm still learning. So, firstly, I want to, as as also I answered in the previous question, I want to become a better teacher. I mean, I do believe teaching is fulfilling because you are you are helping someone develop a skill, right? It's something that they can go out in the world and use, and maybe have some experiences that I have. Maybe they're going to go to a different country, and because of the fact that I taught them English, they would find it easier to communicate somewhere. Mm -hmm. So that, that makes me feel better. Um, but I would say the plan is, and this is just for now how I see it, is I wanna, I wanna be in Vietnam for about a year, a year and a half, maybe two years, because I really like the company I'm working for, right? Mm -hmm. So, and then I'm not sure after that. I, I love Canada. That's, that's probably where, where I would like to go, to go next. Maybe like 2023. That's, that's sort of the goal. But the thing is, the plan could change. I'm literally only out of my country for, for three months. So, who knows, I might love it here and be like, don't worry about Canada, I might move to Japan, I might... But I'm also, yeah, I'm a very big Japanese fan, just okay. of the Japanese, or from, from what I see, you know, the Japanese culture, the video games, the anime, that, that type of style. So, um, it's open-minded. Open I, do, I do have a plan. Uh, and I'm looking at Canada in the long run, but between Vietnam and, and then Canada, I'm not sure. I'll fill it in as I go. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then, do you have plans on returning back to your home country to live? Just to visit. Just to visit. I doubt. I'll, I doubt that I'll ever move back there to to live back there. I don't think so. To to be quite honest. Um, if, 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 the, if there'll be a country that I'll, I'd settle in, it'll most likely be Canada. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'll, I'll go on vacation, visit the family, but not to move back there now. Okay, excellent, excellent. Uh, so we've, we've already kind of touched on the reasons why, right. uh, so we won't go back into that. What I want to do next is I kind of want to open it up for you. Uh, right. The audience is yours, you can check out the camera. 
Uh, anything that you want to say, uh, it's yours to say. Okay. Well, firstly, I'd like to thank Abraham for, for, for the time and for listening to my story. The one thing that I think I would like to say is, guys, if, if you have a dream to leave your country, and if there's any South Africans out there, when you're in South Africa, you sort of get stuck in this mindset that this is how things are, and this is how it's done, and this is where I'm stuck. I just want to be here to tell you that you are not stuck. I thought that way for a very long time. I mean, I'm, I'm 33 years old, and this is when I decided to leave the country. Up to this point, and based on the last three months, I would say it's probably the best decision I've made in my life. So I'm, I'm, I'm here to tell you if, if that's what you want to do, you can do it. Just get on it and start working towards it. I mean, I literally moved in two weeks <laughs> and Abram helped me as well. So I would say, guys, get out there, follow your dreams and be more open-minded. That's it. All right. All right. Well, that's it for today's episode. I hope that you like it. If you did like it, hit the like button for us. Uh, subscribe and uh, look forward to having more of these videos every week. I'm going to bring you stories from a lot of different expats, different stories, different backgrounds. This way it can help inspire and motivate you to make that move. Until the next time, expat your life. See you later.